All of my content is also posted on fivecolorcombo.com, a great website for all of your Magic the Gathering needs, including articles, podcasts, and custom Magic the Gathering tokens and playmats. As a subscriber to my channel, you can use the discount code NITZAHONE5 for a 5% discount in their store. You can find the link in the description below. Hello everyone and welcome to the October 2016 edition of Budget MTG. This is a monthly series that I, Nitsahone, do here on my channel uh, each and every month. I guess that's what monthly means. And uh, each month I do this on my channel. And basically it's a cheap budget deck for either standard or modern. Those are basically the formats I'm the most comfortable with anyway. And these decks are usually under $100 on both Magic Online and in paper and usually considerably less than that. Um, you can find the deck list for this video and how much it costs, uh, both the, how much it costs in the description, I mean in the name of the video and the deck list in the description. Um, and this deck for this month, we're going back to standard. We've done modern for a couple months because Collected Company was a terrible card to have to build budget decks for around, I mean, because everyone is playing Collected Company. It was a difficult card to beat. It could be done, but it puts you at a big disadvantage to build a budget deck in old standard. This standard, I think it is possible. It's also a fresh standard, so there's certain cards that may not have been played enough yet to be really expensive. Um, basically, what we have here is a deck that's sort of a different take on the red-white aggro deck that's sort of a tier one deck, at least right now, in the very very young standard. It runs some of the same cards, um, such as Toolcraft Exemplar and Inventor's Apprentice, who we have here, um, which we'll talk about more. But it's a more equipment-based deck. It's a deck that tries to make use of Stonehaven Outfitter, a card I've been wanting to make use of since it got printed, and I think this new standard is the best atmosphere for it. And so basically the deck is way more equipment-based. It runs 12 pieces of equipment. We'll talk about those first. And it's just a really low-curve equipment aggro deck. The main goal of the deck is to play huge creatures on turns one, two, and three that are difficult for the opponent to deal with, and you can quickly kill the opponent. If you're up against any sort of opponent who's a slow deck that's sort of spinning their wheels early, playing their tap land, sacking their evolving wilds, you're going to punish them greatly. Um, and so that's, you know, the, the thing that this deck is the best against. But it can it can do okay in the mirror, um, and it, which, you know, the red-white aggro deck. And it can also do a decent job against decks like uh, Team Merge, because usually it spins its wheels just enough in the early game that we can we can get some done. Although they do play a lot of annoying blockers. So of the higher curve decks in the format, it's definitely the hardest one to beat. But so we'll talk about the equipment first. So we have four bone saws, uh, you know, zero mana and equip one. We want to get artifacts in play as quickly as possible and really as many as possible because our toolcraft exemplar is powered by artifacts. Um, he gets be a 3-2 with first strike for one mana if you have artifacts in play. And for us, generally, if we have artifacts in play, they're equipment, and that means he's actually even bigger than that. Inventor's Apprentice wants at least one artifact in play, becomes a one mana, 2-3. They're calling it Nerd Ape after the old Curd Ape. Um, and so we want to play artifacts, and we want to play equipment. We're incentivized to do that by our many of our creatures. Um, we also run Inventor's Goggles, and this, I think, is sort of the glue that makes this deck actually work. Almost all the creatures in the deck are Artificers, so this card equipped for free all the time. And the, probably the ideal thing to do with this deck is play Inventor's Goggles on turn one, one of these guys on turn two. Sometimes it's better to play the Exemplar on turn one, depending on what's going on. But, but, uh, and that allows for a crazy thing. The, the, the best thing this deck can do... Maybe. You know, it's arguable, but one of the most fun things this deck can do is turn one Inventor's Goggles, turn two Stonehaven Outfitter, and you have a two mana four five, so you can feel like you're playing a Tarmogoyf in modern, and it draws you a card when it dies. And that's a hard thing for your opponent to deal with. Um and that's something that this deck, you know, it does frequently. It, and it frequently just makes huge other artificers as well. So we also have Pia Nalar who's an artificer. This is our only non artificer, but we'll talk about the equipment first. We got Neglected Heirloom, has no sp special synergies with the deck other than just being a one mana equipment that equips and gives plus one plus one i didn't want any of my equip costs to be more than one if they weren't on inventor's goggles we can handle it there because it's going to be free a lot of the time so those are our 12 equipment and it's it's enough uh, the deck seems to get them consistently enough to power the deck uh fairly well so like i said we got toolcraft exemplar we got inventor's apprentice we got stonehaven outfitter then we also have beaumont courier it's a card i like because in a format where you can run into cards like that are board sweepers, like uh, Coslex Return, things like that, being able to play like a turn one Bomat Courier, get some cards under it, and be able to sacrifice it later to, in response to a board sweeper, in response to a lot of things, to restock your hand is good. And you don't even need that to happen for it to be good. Because if you get in with this even a couple times, um, you can also equip it to make it easier to get in with. Um, in the later game, it can just restock your hand when you run out of gas, and that's just a good thing to have. It's also an artifact, so it powers our Exemplar and our Apprentice. 
Um, and yeah, so that's our non-artificer. We also have PNLR, who is an artificer, um, and she's our high curve. You can see we have a very low curve. We only run 22 lands because of it. PNLR, three mana, two, two, gives you a Thopter, so it gives you another artifact. A good one for equipping because it's in the air. She can also pump artifacts, but the thing that tends to be the most relevant is her ability to make creatures unable to block. So in the early game, our deck b bashes people down, gets them down to, like, you know, six or eight life. Sometimes they're able to stabilize, play a big blocker. Well... If we get PNLR in play, it doesn't matter, and we can just do the last damage we need to do. Um, another sort of pseudo creature we have is Sky Skiff. It's our budget version, basically, of um, Smuggler's Copter. Um, if you have Smuggler's Copter and you want to build a non budget version of this deck, it's strictly better than Sky Skiff, so you should. Um, but it works fine. It has the same strength Sky Skiff, that Smuggler's Copter has, at least some of them, one of which is that it's immune to uh, sweeping board sweepers and it's immune to sorcery speed removal and um it has evasion so it's another card that gives us reach pnlr and sky skiff sort of give us reach in the later part of the game um that's the bulk of the deck but we just have the removal to talk about declaration and stone i initially had as a four of in this deck in the early stages but i ran into so many smugglers copters that made it feel bad that i said i'm going to split between two declaration and stones and two harness lightnings Harness Lightning can kill Smuggler's Copter at instant speed. Instant speed removal is very important to have in standard right now because Smuggler's Copter is everywhere. And, you know, Sky Skiff, too. Um, but uh, so that's, that's basically our only removal. The deck is almost all in on creatures. It can kill people incredibly quickly. We'll talk about the lands. You know, we got the new Fast Land Inspiring Vantage. Uh, then we have, what do we have here? Seven Mountains and Seven Plains. And then four Needle Spires. Needle Spires occasionally can just win you a game. Like, it's another card that's resilient against the sweepers because your opponent might play a sweeper and then not realize that you can, like, animate Needle Spires and put a bone saw on it and hit them for six. And that's, you know, that's just a lot of fun. So that's the main board. We'll talk about the sideboard now. So we've got three Fragmentizes. This is because of a couple decks in standard right now. Uh, the Red-White Equipment deck. Uh, not Red-White Equipment. Red-White um, Vehicles deck. It can blow up most of the vehicles in the deck, and I think that's a good thing to be able to do. Uh... It's, it is sorcery speed, but they're artifacts always, so you can at least blow that up. It's not bad in any other deck that's running Inventor against any other deck running Inventor's Goggles. It's not bad against Stasis Snare, which is seeing some play. It's also not bad against uh, Aetherworks Marvel, which people are trying to find a way to make work because it can blow that up as well. Uh, we have Galvanic Bombardment. There are games where Declaration of Stone is just bad, and these are against aggro decks like human decks where we can just bring in Galvanic Bombardments, which are way better against these smaller creatures. And on the flip side, we have two Declaration and Stones in our sideboard for against more controlling decks that play big, scary creatures that aren't afraid of Harness Lightning, and we decide out the Harness Lightnings. A lot of our sideboard is just making our removal better, um, but not quite all of it. Uh, we also have one Tears of Valakut. It's a good way to kill uh, Sky Sovereign, the, the big, scary, uh, mythic vehicle that's sort of the curve topper for the, for the equipment decks. For the vehicle decks, they keep calling them equipment decks. Um, it can blow blow it up, and that's a nice thing to have. Um, but we can also do that with Sky Whaler's Shot, which can also blow up Smuggler's Copter. So actually, Sky Skiff is a sweet tech against all the Sky Whaler shots and sideboards. No, nah, it's not really. But uh, Stasis Snare um, is a nice card to have uh, against a lot of decks, you know, that play big creatures as well. And then we have Weaver of Lightning, who's here, sort of as a stopgap. It's good against any deck that has X1s in it, um, especially if we're siding in some more removal. But it's also good against Smuggler's Copter. Smuggler's Copter cannot beat you in the air very effectively if you have Weaver of Lightning. They can discard their land still, but if we're still able to bash our opponent and our Weaver can just block, it's a good thing to have. We also have one land, which is not something I do very frequently, but because we have a large quantity of three drops, and if we like decide to side out our Harness Lightnings... Um, and our Declaration in Stones for some removal that's just better against our opponent and our Weavers of Lightning, let's say. I don't think 22 lands is enough to support that many three drops. So I have one land there just so we can feel more comfortable about setting in all those threes. So this is the deck. I'm going to play five matches with it now. Uh, you'll see how it does against, you know, Tier 1 decks that are running Smuggler's Copters and the like. So thanks for watching. Um, if you find this deck interesting and useful, uh, click the Like button. If you want to make sure you catch Budget MTG each and every month, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any comments about the deck, obviously you can post them below.